got some something here, which is about the same as over here. But uh, I'll show the full process now. We take one of these strips. That one a hole. Is, that one got a hole as well. Yeah. There's a hole inside, so we need to go a little, little bit offset. And then just push it on, torque it to spec. Covering the microphone because of the music. And then you just torque it. Uh, what's our torque? 175 inch pounds. That's what we want. When you torque it as you would normally torque the cap as per service manual or whatever. All right. And then you take the cap off and check how your plastic piece looks like. Right. Just get a cap off, have a look at it and Went a bit sticky, but it looks okay actually. It's a bit poor here. I think it's about the same 0.04 on a bit, maybe. Hmm. We're doing millimeters here, by the way. Okay, let's do that one. I I would put money on that, that this one is well over spec, and this is probably tight. It looks like it. Here we got quite an interesting result. I was almost putting money on it that this will be much more clearance than here. But what we have here is, I think the cap is worn the same way as the, as the shaft itself because I got about almost 110 lower here than here when I measure it on the shaft. So the cap, you can see somewhere here, so look. It's worn down. Anyway, we'll think about it. Okay, we decided to do some machining here because the surfaces are probably, I don't know, chewed with something. I don't know. It's uh, really bad. We got thread marks here, here, and here. That's about it. I think someone filed it or, I don't know. Uh, I polished the shafts already. Uh, we need to get rid of these marks. And that's what we're gonna do. Sweat the uh, slate, didn't find. Call it a day, carry on tomorrow. Okay, we have some more work here. Um, we need to get those flat because it was ridiculously worn. I already did one, uh, one pass. It's 400 uh, grit sandpaper with oil. This is the other one, which basically kinks off this way. Let's do it just one stroke. And you can see where it's threading nowhere. And I don't know if it's visible on camera, but it's a lot here, a lot here, and something here. That's our problem. Then we're gonna lap the inside diameter because I already, already lapped the uh, journals of the camshaft so look at that that was two strokes on the sandpaper <laughs> especially here but yeah the surface is very rough um, yeah it was uh, God's mechanic was on was here anyway let me do that and uh, welcome back so number one is done surface is very smooth and we lapped it with uh, lapping paper and oil just to get rid of the high spots here looks good to me we'll check clearance and then we'll see where we are gonna do the next one now That's another candidate do you need to wash it? Oh, we found <coughs> where is that coming from? <laughs> was it there? Okay. Same problem with not bearing. Plenty of wear and ridges. That washer was there? Yep. 
That's always good if you find the washer in the cylinder, huh? 100% certain it was there. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Alright, we'll investigate that yet further. We got some success. Uh, we had 0.07 before, probably less. I need to check the video. Now we're down to 0.04 clearance, which is pretty good actually. That's about where we want to be because the front one uh, had a lot of clearance and if you got a lot of clearance here you lose oil pressure. So check the next one, it's almost done because we did the same with this one. Just slapped it and uh, cleaned the surface just to get rid of the scoring marks and then we'll just put it on. Let's try it on. So that's the rear one with the fancy tread pattern. We'll see what we get out of it when we it's completely blue. Give it one stroke and we can see here, here and here. That's about it. So we need to do a little bit of work on that. But not too much because the clearance was good on that. We just pulled the exhaust ones as well and if you look at it and thinking about it I think it was a belt sander. Just on the belt sander just hold it down until you got the right clearance. It's surface is extremely rough so I don't like that. We'll see what comes out of the measurements. We do some plastic gauge measurements on the exhaust cam as well. So that's how the exhaust cam looks after doing a little bit of work on the covers because they were completely trashed. They've been on the belt center I'm pretty sure. We have still a bit low clearance here but the journal diameter is smaller here than here so that's the cap there's nothing you can do. Um, we pulled the plug out of the cam and we wash it through because we suspect there is some dirt inside. How the bearings look like, it looks almost like it's eaten some sand or so. It's really strange. As we don't know the history, you never, you never know what happened to the engine. Someone tried to rotate the camshaft with a pair of pliers or water pump pliers or whatever. It looks really odd. Doesn't look very professional. But again, we don't know anything about the previous owner of the car. All right. Let's have a coffee and then we'll assemble the head. So we got it back together, greased all the lobes and the bearings with uh, molly, whatever, molly slip stuff. And uh, we'll torque them up and test the valve clearance before we put it into the car because it's much easier on the bench. And uh, Hopefully they're all good. If they haven't swapped any tappets, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that's boring. Luckily I'm just filming. So it looks like we got it almost back together. The distributor drive is there. That's for the that's for the taco. Intake manifolds are there. If you put in the throttles, you need to align these. This between this spring and the bolt. The reason why we have these green caps on there is we don't want any dirt in the injectors. It's just a piece of tape and a cable tie. Uh, because they're very sensitive. If there is dirt in it, they don't work anymore. Um, we need to clean that coolant hose a little bit and uh, then we're ready to put it back on looks like just cleaning block and uh, see how that looks like no oh, this side is fairly clean now we need to fix the exhaust gasket somehow in the cylinder head before we put it in uh, i'm trying to get the master cylinder out. Um, I drained all the fluid. I need to pull the plugs here. You need new connectors here. I got some. And uh, 
because that's in the way if you're going to pull the head. So I'm working on this side to get it dismantled while he's working on the other side to get it reassembled. Um, yeah, that's the plan for now. Um, I use one of these suckers here to suck the brake fluid out. Makes life much easier because if you open these brake lines, it starts ripping. That's where we're at the moment. It's day two. Well, two o'clock or so, don't know. Plan is to have this head assembled and this one off. Probably a bit tight today. Okay. Now we're gonna fiddle this thing in. Here. Oh, we got it set again. Uh, it's just we need to fiddle with the chains here to make them get them in the right position. We need to fiddle this chain underneath because it comes from the tensioner that is attached to the roll down here. And uh, tighten head bolts and uh, then do all the other stuff. I think we need to fit that little bolt first because it's a bit of it's actually a bit off center. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the way. All your linkages from the carburetors. That looks good. Uh, before you put the chains on, check the position. We we are in the correct position. These two lobes should point inwards. That they do that. Uh, yeah, happy so far. Get the chain on. Tighten the head bolts. We'll come back when it's done. That. Uh, just tightening the head bolts, 25 newton meters, and uh, there's a strange procedure, we'll talk about it later. You need to drain the coolant again and tighten it again, and really strange one. But we got it all back together and it seems it fits. Still need to do the cam chain, and then we'll pull this head. It's gonna be tight today. Here we got the and filler housing. I don't know if it's visible, but it's extremely pitted. Uh, I did it over the surface plate and it, it's, it's, it's not flat anymore. As someone pulled it down with probably too much force because it's threading here and here and a little bit here and here, that's about it. That's why it's leaking. Here we got the same problem, all the gasket surfaces are really badly pitted and dirty. It was full of lime scale here. So we give that a clean, make it pretty again and then hopefully it's okay.